are ridiculous. A ridiculous man. Oh, they call me a madman now. But I don't mind. You see, I love them. Oh, yes, I do, especially when they're laughing at me. I'd like to share the joke with them, I would. I'd laugh at myself, too. If only I didn't feel so sad. What is it that makes me sad? Well, you see, they don't know the truth. I'd stop caring. You see. But then that was before I learned the truth. It all happened in November. On the 3rd of November, to be precise. And since that day, every moment of my life has been printed indelibly on my mind. It was a terrible night. Dreadful weather. Pouring rain. Cold, relentless, piercing through. A sort of rain which has a distinct animosity towards people. The city where I live is a pretty depressing place at the best of times. But that night was the gloomiest hole on earth. At 11 o'clock, the rain suddenly stopped. It gave way to a horrible dampness. Freezing cold damp piercing through, made a sort of steam rise up from the gutters and the pavements. I glanced up at the sky, it was pitch black. I could make out the torn wisps of clouds and between them fathomless dark chasms. In the depths of one of those pits, I noticed a tiny star. It sparkled. Lonely beautiful. I gazed at it for a long while. I was transfixed by it. Because that tiny star had given me an idea. I would kill myself that night. Oh, I decided to kill myself long before that. At least two months before. In fact, despite my financial predicament, I'd splashed out on a revolver I'd taken it home and loaded it immediately. So you see, each night for two months, I had returned to my rooms with the firm intention of shooting myself. It was just the question of finding the perfect moment. And now, that tiny star had given me the clue. It had to be that night. <laughs> no question about it. 
had to do it that night. Now you're asking, why did that little star clinch the matter? I have no idea. Anyway, there I stood staring up at the sky, when suddenly this little girl grabbed hold of my arm. She must have been about eight. And all she had on in this cold was a thin cotton dress, badly torn. She was soaked to the skin. But I particularly remember her broken sandals. I remember them even now. They struck me, particularly. She seemed terrified by something. She clutched hold of my elbow. And she was crying, crying, no, no, uh, crying out, babbling, Mama, my Mama. I, I, I turned and walked away, I said nothing. But she came after me, tugging at my coat, making that odd sound, that strangulated sound final moment of despair. I know that sound. She was choking on her words, but it was quite clear that her mother lay dying or somewhere nearby. Or some other disaster had happened to the woman. And the girl had run into the street to find help. Well, I didn't go. On the contrary, I tried to get rid of her. I told her to call the police. But she grabbed hold of my hand. I shook it away. She ran after me. Well, that was when I turned, stamped my foot, and I screamed at her. And all she did was to cry out, Sir, oh, please, please. And then she stopped. She left me. She, she ran across the road. I think somebody must have been turning the corner. And she ran from me to him. I arrived home. I went straight to my room. I sat down at my table. I opened the drawer. I took out my revolver. I looked at it. I lifted it. I, I pressed the barrel against my lips. It was very cold. My breath hung in the air. Very carefully, I pulled back the catch. And as I did so, I remember asking myself, is this it? And replying with absolute certainty. Oh yes, this is it. And then I remembered the little girl. Well, I was in a dilemma, you can see that. She had created a problem. If I were going to kill myself in a few minutes, why should I be bothered with her? Why bother with anything in the whole world? And yet, I felt pity. She had touched me. She appeared to need me, as if I mattered. But why? Mm -hmm. Why? All right, so why did I scream at her? How could such a tiny voice challenge all the conclusions I'd come to? Question all my arguments? All these things went round and round in my head. I just sat there, staring at my gun, turning these questions over and over in my mind. That little girl saved my life, because then, something has never happened to me before. I fell asleep in my chair. Well, they all laugh at me now. They say it was just a dream. A dream, was it? Is that what it was, just a dream? Well, it makes no difference, dream or not, because to me, to me, it revealed the truth. Oh, my dream revealed to me a different reality. A new life, glorious and perfect. I dream.
dream. And I picked up the gun and pointed it straight at my heart. My heart, not my head, although I had planned to shoot myself in the head, in fact, through my right temple. But strangely, I pointed it at my heart. I waited. One moment. Two. And suddenly, the room began to sway. My candle, the table, the wall in front of me, rocking, swaying. Quickly, I pulled the trigger and everything went out. Total blackness all around me. I was lying on something, hard. I was flat on my back, stretched out. I was moving, jolting. I was being carried. Everywhere, people were walking, shouting. And I was stuck in my coffin with the lid shut fast. Suddenly, it struck me. I was dead, quite dead. Well, there was no doubt about that. And they were piling sod into my grave. Then, nothing. Everyone had left. I was alone. Totally alone. I don't know how long I lay there. An hour, perhaps. A day. Maybe several days. But suddenly, a drop of water, seeping through the lid of the coffin, dropped onto my left eyelid. One minute later, another drop. Another minute, another drop. And so on and so on. Regular drops at timed intervals. It made me furious. Indignation welled up inside me. And I screamed out to him, the one I assumed was responsible for my fate. Whoever you are, and if you are, and if there is some great mind behind all this, then reveal your plan. But if you are punishing me because of my stupid little suicide, then let me tell you that no torture you can devise will compare with the contempt I shall feel for you, though you make me suffer billions of years of silent martyrdom. I made my position clear. Silence lasted nearly a minute. Another drop fell. But somehow I knew that from now on, everything would change. And that was when my tomb was ripped open. And I was lifted out of my grave by some dark and strange being. Suddenly, I could see, I could see. He swept me up onto his shoulders. I climbed up tightly. Days, angry because I didn't believe in an afterlife. And here, my beliefs were being confounded, exploded. With great wings or oh, some other way, I don't know how. We flew up into the sky. Into deep darkness. I've never, never seen such darkness. You know, of course, this journey had a purpose. It was for my benefit entirely. That's what made me so afraid. Because something told me I could not escape the pain that lay ahead of me, nor the love that carried me towards it. Suddenly I was overcome with such a familiar feeling, so stirring. I saw our son. Oh, I knew it couldn't be our son. But my whole being cried out that it was a son exactly like ours, a, a, a twin. A duplicate. I was filled with longing, with ecstasy. Because if this was the sun, I mean, if this was a sun exactly like ours, then where was the earth? My companion pointed to a star twinkling in the darkness. Lonely, beautiful, twinkling in the deep darkness like an emerald. We were headed straight to I don't know how it happened exactly. I was hardly aware, but suddenly, suddenly I found myself on this other earth in the bright sunlight of a day as lovely as paradise. My companion had gone. I couldn't believe it. 
Everything all around me was exactly like our Earth, only brighter, richer, and somehow more real. The sea lapped the shore, loving it, caressing it, or so it seemed. The trees, in all their glory, waved to me with thousands of shimmering leaves. Everything welcomed me, everything beckoned. The birds flocked in the sky, fluttering all around me, and beating the air with their soft wings, and settling without fear on my shoulders and hands. And then... Oh, then... I came to know the people of this world. And slowly, they emerged from the forest. Down from the hills they came, one by one. They surrounded me, they welcomed me. Children of the sun, of their own sun. So beautiful. I've never, ever seen such beauty. Only in our very youngest children, maybe, maybe you can see a reflection of that beauty. I understood everything the moment I looked into their eyes. For instance, it seemed incredible to me with my modern progressive mind that they had no science. There was no room for it. They had everything. They didn't need to improve their knowledge. They didn't investigate life, they lived. They didn't inquire, research, analyze, probe. They lived, they lived. They enjoyed life. And their knowledge was finer and far more profound than our science. Oh, mysterious, mysterious. I knew I would never be able to enter the depths of that wisdom. Mm. If only I could convey something to you, a fragment, just a fragment of that life. For instance, their trees. Now, they, they showed me their trees. And I was baffled by the love they had for them, as if, and I don't think I'm exaggerating here, as if they were talking to them, holding conversations with beings like themselves. All of nature was in communion with them. The animals lived at one with the people, living in peace, with no need to attack anyone. Oh, how can people from our Earth understand this? <laughs> Ridiculous. Every night, they would sing songs. Haunting songs. Many of them were far beyond me, far beyond my comprehension. But some beautiful, simple melodies I could understand. They expressed the sensations the parting day had given them. They praised it and bade it farewell. Oh, everyone laughs in my face now. Everyone argues that no one could dream in such detail. No dream could be so definite. It was a feeling, a vague sensation. And when I woke up, well, I made up the rest, didn't I? And when I've admitted that, yes, well, yes, yes, that may well be so. Oh, Lord, the uproar, the, the hilarity, the endless fun of my spirits. <laughs> all right, all right. It was a dream. But all of this was. It had to be. Because something happened next. Something so frighteningly true, it could never be invented. I've hidden this till now, but now I'll tell you. I'll offer you this truth as well. The fact is, you see, I corrupted them all. Don't ask me how it happened. I only know that it did. I spread contamination into that world. Reproaches and recriminations began. They came to understand guilt and made a virtue of it. The people learned from me how to lie. They came to love lying, to appreciate the beauty of lies. But soon, very soon, I know, blood was shed for the first time. The people were shocked and frightened. They began to separate. They formed alliances, movements, unions, parties. They were all violently opposed. Oh, now they were talking in different languages. As the bacteria spread, they began talking of humanity and fraternity, the environment. And the more depraved they became, the more they applauded these ideas. 
And as they became criminals, they invented the idea of justice, and they drew up huge codes of law, and to maintain their law, they erected scaffolds. And the notion that they had been once so happy made them laugh. And they called it a dream. Then great leaders appeared, claiming to know how to bring everyone together again. How to build a world based on unity and freedom. Freedom. Freedom for everyone to love himself far more than everybody else. Great wars were fought for this idea, and so it went on. Systems, creeds, speeches, declarations, on and on. Books and series and orators and governments. On and on the illusion of peace went. Intellect, reason, self-preservation. Everything would force mankind to unite. Everyone would serve the great idea. Meanwhile, the wise exterminated the unwise in case they should get in the way of the idea's final and absolute triumph. Bitterly disillusioned, the people threw themselves into sensuality at any cost, resorting to violence to satisfy their appetites. At last, at last, they were worn out with their meaningless existence. Suffering lined their face. I wandered among them, crying, pleading. I held up my arms to them in despair, accusing, hating myself. I had done it, I said. I was responsible. I had infected them with contamination, corruption, and lies. I begged them to crucify me. I taught them how to make a cross. I wanted my blood to be drained every drop, every drop, killed for the torment they were suffering. <laughs> That's where I came to my senses. It was already morning, but before dawn, about five o'clock, I woke up in my chair. There was deep silence all around me. I saw my revolver lying in front of me, loaded. Ready. I pushed it away. No! Give me life! Life! I was elated. I was on fire with hope and I wanted to live! It's a shout. Yes, yes, the shout out to tell everybody. What? You want to know what? I'll tell you. The truth. For I have seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes and its living image has taken hold of me forever. Oh, granted, I don't know how to build paradise on earth. I've no idea, but that doesn't matter. I'll go on. I'll go ahead. I'll speak out, for I have seen it with my own eyes. Oh, the muckers fail to appreciate that. They're so proud of themselves. Just a dream, they say. They dismiss it all as a dream. A dream. But what is a dream? Isn't our own life a dream? Well, well, I'll go on, I'll go further. All right, all right, what if paradise is never achieved? What if it never happens? What then? Hmm? Then I'll still go ahead. I'll admit what I did, and what I must do, admit, accept responsibility for my actions, conceal nothing, and, 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 and then it could be done so easily, in a single day, in a, in a single hour, it could be done. Surely we could love each other as we love ourselves. That's the main thing. That's it. Nothing else. Absolutely nothing else is necessary. Do that and the way forward is clear. Isn't it? Isn't it? All right. 
So it's nothing but an old truth, repeated, said billions of times. Well, why hasn't it taken root then? If only we all wanted it, then everything could begin again. Ah, yes. And when I... When I find the little girl, and I shall find her. I shall find her.